for some reason my OBS. Yeah, we can. All right, cool. We're good. And welcome to Masters of Modern. I am your host, Alex Kessler, here with my co-host, Ben Bateman. What's up? What's up? What's up? Uh, uh, I'm excited to be here. We are talking about the ban and restricted announcement July 13th this morning. Yep, 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 yep. Um, A lot, a lot, a lot. There's a lot. Uh, have you looked at the full list of things that happened? There's a ton, yeah. So in our for our purposes, for our major purposes of modern, there's only one thing to talk about. But there's like all sorts of things. There's there's like a pioneer thing, which is hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Um, like the pioneer conversation is going to be the most fascinating. I mean, I, th let's let's kind of go like. Well, first, I guess the first thing I want to say is I want to apologize to the Popper community at large. Um, we don't know much about Popper. I'm never going to say that I've, I think, have actually played zero games. Maybe one game. I think I think one time someone at Heidi Ho lent me a deck. Uh, and um, we went on a small tangent that Astrolab was going to be banned in Popper. Uh, it turns out mm -hmm. that it has been banned <laughs> for a while now. <laughs> um, though our shot call on Mystic Sanctuary, I think, was was pretty spot on. I think that one was pretty obvious. And then we did miss, we didn't really talk about Tron. Uh, so Tron had Expedition Map banned. Expedition Map joins. Mm -hmm. uh, a long list of tutors banned in many formats. Um, and I think it, the one thing that's fascinating to me is that I do think that if I'm Wizards and I want to take like Noctron a little bit in modern if it ever becomes a problem i do think expedition map is what i would look at um i think that that card is like the colorless way that that deck is always going to find the lands it needs and it makes it so that you need colored mana or a bobble or not a bobble but you know an artifact that can filter mana to to get you the color you need to be able to find um use one of the green search effects ancestral vision not ancestral visions uh ancient stirrings um etc uh, yep. but, um, yeah, this all makes sense to me based on what people have informed us of, of the format since, since this happened. Um, yeah, we weren't, we weren't, we weren't like locked in, we weren't locked into the popper scene prior to including it in that piece of our discussion, but you know, we, we did try to share our thoughts on it. I think the most significant pieces here, I do want to talk a little bit about the historic bands because I think historic is becoming something that you and I are like pretty excited about. Um, I, like I streamed some historic last week on my tw on Twitch, uh, and I expect to continue doing that. Um, so I think it's like a notable format to talk about. And then obviously the modern banning uh, of Astrolab is the is the most important thing for our purposes to talk about. Yeah, I think I think what's really interesting about the well, first off, historic is interesting, right? Because they have this mechanic, and it's built on the fact that in historic, if a card gets banned, you get free stuff, right? You get wild cards if they ban a card. Yeah. So they've created a function where they do suspensions, right? And that, that means, like, this might come back. We don't have to give you a wild card because it's still legal, kind of. Um, and so a lot of the historic con kind of conversation was about suspend taking cards that were suspended and banning them. Uh, Asian Treasury, Renoda, and Fires of Invention were all suspended last announcement, and they're now officially banned. Um, so free wild cards for anyone who had those uh, in the format. Um, now, for... The big, the big one is that they just straight up banned Nexus of Fate. They didn't even let it get to the suspended moment. They're just like, this card is never going to be okay. It's been a problem in every format we've ever had it in. Let's just never look at this card again. It was a buy a box promo anyway. It wasn't even a real magic card. Uh, can we just explain really quickly? And can you explain? Because I've played against it. But just so anybody who's listening understands, like there have been lots of time warp effects printed in Magic's history. Tons of them. Why is Nexus of Fate such a problem? Like, what is the thing about it that, like, forces it to be banned in a format? The fact that, I, like, the fact that it comes back, right? So, so, so most effects either exile themselves or they, like, stick themselves in the graveyard. Like, Time Warp is really good because you can buy it back with flashback effects or anything that lets you buy it out from the graveyard. But you need those effects to make it work. Nexus of Fate, yeah. like creates if you can turbo fog your way to the point where it's only the, like some of the only cards left in your deck you're so much more likely to just every turn take an extra turn that it creates these like very very public game states and then add that to the fact that um the card that we thought would be banned and wasn't and i think still probably would be on my chopping list at moving forward which is the enchantment that i'm forgetting the name of and i'm going to scroll down on the announcement because they mention it like 17 times uh wilderness reclamation like it in combination yeah. wilderness reclamation the fact that it's an instant allows you to kind of go up and that that's the other piece right most extra turn effects aren't instant speed things so this being a seven mana instant speed i take an extra turn that has a combo that lets you just ramp to seven mana on turn four anyways 
but also puts you in a position where you like have an inevitability of eventually just taking infinite extra turns. Um, means that uh, hey Carson Genetics, hey Carson. <laughs> uh, <laughs> It is crime time. Uh, crimes against Popper, apparently. Um, and then, so that's just, that's really the problem with it, right? Like, those two cards together ramp you out on turn four, taking extra turns. And then if you can just control the game to the late game, you eventually will just have, uh, like, of your 20 cards that are left in your deck, 20% of them will be extra turn effects. And using extra turn, you know, draw effects and our other effects, you can just make it so you're just taking as many turns as you want. Um... Makes sense. And then the last card is Burning Tree Emissary. So that was, I think, a big miss on our part. And, and I think that had more to do with my assumption was that in Historic, Nexus of Fate was so dominant. It was kind of like the Cobblade situation where, like, the only deck that really had a chance against it, against it was Red Green Aggro. Um, but they decided just to suspend Burning Tree Mem Emissary because at the point, like, literally the format was Red Green Aggro and, and uh, Nexus of Fate decks. My yeah. assumption was that it was a reaction to Nexus of Fate, not necessarily defining of it. So, of a, one of your favorite cards, Ben, uh, Burning Tree Emissary, added to the suspended I love that list. Card. Um, it is a free two-two, right? Like it, like it has, I guess, the chops of cards that have been on ban lists. I can see this being unsuspended. This one, this is one of the few times I think a card that's yeah. been suspended was more. It's going to be interesting what the metagame turns into historic to see where this comes off of. But I, I don't think in the long run this is a card that'll forever be banned. It exists in, in this funny sort of in-between of Velocity where, like, once you get to a format like Modern, it's, like, pretty hard for an effect like Burning Tree Emissary to be really good uh, just to get extra 2-2s two early, like, to, to, like, ramp it out. But when you're in the world of, like, Historic where you have just enough support and, like, just enough things that go with it, it's just at that top level of Velocity early in the game where I think I can understand suspending it. And right. honestly, if, if they didn't and they waited two years... Uh, it just wouldn't be a problem because I guarantee you within the next two years, the format will become powerful enough that like getting early two twos just doesn't matter. Right. But we're a young enough format right now that it's just that like Nicotl effect where like Nicotl was a problematic at modern when modern was really young because there was just like, it just wasn't that powerful yet. It's so powerful now that getting a three, three turn one, who cares? Like that's just not that good. Right. You know, it's kind of the same thing here. Uh, we're just not quite there, but I, I love burning tree emissary. I mean, if they decide to put mirror superior into uh, in one of these historic anthology sets, you know, I'll be all about it. Yeah, I, I think I think uh, uh, Carson brings up Gruel Cloud of Fairies. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I think I think the someone also brings up the fact that it, it's pretty busted that it can just like get Ember Cleave on turn three, going yeah. pretty easily. That's like that's that's, that's really like strong. the nuts thing that it does. Um, I I do think that it is just it's a card that I can see coming off. I think I it to me Gruel being so good felt like a response to. The Nexus of Fate decks being as powerful as they were, not necessarily a response to the metagame not being able to handle it. It's just the decks that could beat it were just destroyed by Nexus of Fate decks. So there is like this kind of weird failure of the rock, paper, scissors system. It's what happened in Cobblade Standard, right? The Cobblade was extremely good. Uh, there were decks that could beat it, but those decks were terrible against Valakut decks. And because Valakut was the second most played deck in the format, it made it so that just neither, no deck could survive against both of those options. And this is a, a similar situation. And 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 Cobble, and Cobble just stomped on Valakut, right? That was the the, the other issue. Um, but I also think it's funny, like like Gruel Aggro, or even like decks that don't have black in them, like just like Gruel decks that attack. Mm -hmm. They're never they're never that good in any format they're always like they're always like really good for a minute but they're not it's not like blue white control where it's always good kind of in every format there's always a version of it you can play that just like sort of functions as the counter to like what people are doing right gruel aggro is always that thing that has to it has to hit like exactly the right moment of like we just need something that's aggressive but has a little more beef to it so this is going to work you know so and someone brought up that like mere superior the feels like an anthology card that they might release one day too so like maybe it'll come back then yeah, i hope so i hope so <laughs> well um, like, by the way guys there's a there's 150 of you watching us right now uh, which is pretty awesome oh really uh, and there's 11 that's... people that there, there are 11 likes so if you guys can just oh, yeah, go like ahead it. and hit the like button I think most of you guys probably are subscribers already. If you're not subscribers and you want to subscribe, we do content every single week about Modern. We also tonight are doing something for the first time together that I'm really excited about. 
Uh, we're going to talk more about the bannings in a second here, but I just want to give you guys a quick shout-out about it. I'm going to be playing Commander on camera with Alex. Yeah, we're live uh, We have a group of people. Uh, for sure, for sure, uh, the Tappy Toe Claws will be joining us, and then and then I think we I think we have an Olivia uh, joining as well. Um, it'll be really fun. Uh, what, what deck are you playing? What deck are you playing? I think I'm probably going to play Sig. I might dust off Brea and see if I can make it work, but I think okay. I'd prefer Sig. I only, okay. I only got to play a small handful of games when I built Sig, and I like really like the deck. Personally, and I yeah, bought I would, a lot of the cards. I would prefer Sig over Brea. Sig, Sig Brea is like super OP. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's just like Brea, like Sig, something that I think a lot of people haven't seen see playing Commander a lot, right? It's a, it's a little bit more of an yeah. original play. Like Brea is just like the best artifact commander. Like, if, like that deck yeah. just exists and people play it. So I think I think Sig yeah. would be. Uh, hi, Jake. Jake Jaquas Jaquas. <laughs> if you could, if you could spell out how your name uh, works, I will say it. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, like, Carson and, and I also get to play. I also get to play my beta deck. pestilence in the Sig deck, which is like really exciting for me because oh, like when sweet. I bought a bunch of beta cards and it like looks really cool, and so I hope I get to play it. Um, anyway, it'll be really fun. Sig River Cutthroat, the one that draws yeah. me cards. So, I like was, so, like dreaming of things to add to the deck yesterday. So right, make sure to like, subscribe, so you get alerted tonight. Uh, we'll be streaming it. Uh, if you want to be on Twitch, so you get like emote fun. Uh, we'll be t streaming it probably through my Twitch, which is twitch.tv slash Uh which we're streaming this right now on that Twitch. So if you're there, also follow. Um, and then make sure to follow us on Twitter because we'll be posting about it on at Kess Wiley. And I just started playing, I actually just started playing Magic on Twitch. I, started, I streamed twice last week. Uh, ben Bateman streaming. I said I was going to do it forever, and I didn't, and then I started to. So I streamed Historic. I, I, I streamed like a blue-green Merfolk deck in Historic, uh, and I streamed an M21 draft, and I'll be streaming again this week. Um, I don't know yet, like, my official, like, day of the week I'm going to be streaming. Probably it'll be Wednesdays. I think this Wednesday at 7 p.m. is probably when I'm going to be streaming next um, but yeah, follow me on Twitch, Ben Bateman streaming, if you guys want to and, have fun with fun brews and, and that's silly a, stuff. That's a good point. Someone asked, what time? 8, 8, 8 o'clock, 8, 8 p.m. Pacific time. Pacific, Pacific Standard Time. PSD. Yeah. PST. PST. Uh, um, so, let's, uh, so let's talk a little bit more about these bands, because I think you know we only have a few minutes here to do this, and I want to make sure that we cover all the important ones. Um, so we mentioned Historic a little bit. Um, we talked about Popper <laughs> uh, briefly. But let's talk. Let's talk modern because this is the this is the one that I think people are here to hear us talk about the most. And, and Astrolab was banned, which we that was the big call, right? That was the number one thing when we did our episode last week of what we thought was going to happen. Yeah, I think that was um, the thing we my shot call on. of Splinter Twin being unbanned was incorrect. Uh, though I wasn't the only one. I saw that it was spiking. Yeah, no. So so uh, sorry doing modern before Pioneer. That's fair because <laughs> Pioneer is the big story. But uh, modern. Um, yeah, I think I think like Wizards explains in their thing, right? It had like a decks that were playing Astrolabe had like a fifty five percent win percentage in non mirror games, which is just like a little bit higher than they like. Uh, I think that they also listen to Vincent a lot when it comes to this stuff, and like other like Saffron both were like big modern streamers that had kind of strong opinions that this card needed to go. It made the format a lot more homogenous. Uh, I would make sure you pick up your Blood Moons now. <laughs> um, I do think that. Um, it, to me, the fact that they didn't ban Veil Summer is maybe the biggest miss to me. I think that card is just, like, a little too unfun and makes it a little bit hard for, like, Junt to exist, I guess. But, like, we'll see, and I think that could go. It feels like Mental Misstep to me, right? It feels like a card that, like, ends up having to be included in a weird way, and I don't know if I love it. Um, but the Astrolab ban going away. It was interesting, though, because on our video, that was one of the cards that people were, like... Like, the two... Astrolab was probably the most contentious card we talked about, partially because we talked about it being banned in Popper for 20 minutes. Popper, but, and we were... Uh, uh, <laughs> but partially because people thought just it didn't need to get banned in Modern, and um, I think that it's probably just for the better. Uh, like, if you look at what was being most played on MTG Goldfish, it just, like, is... Was the... Like, it and cards that go alongside of it were being just overly played compared to other cards in the format, and just four-color decks shouldn't be... Honestly, I don't think four color decks should be a t like a tier one point five or better in modern. I think like for the format to be healthy, yeah. you want anything over three colors to be a tier two deck, um, and have like a real cost to being able to pull that off. The conversation we had on the podcast last week about it, I think, is is pretty sound. Which is like there are like these sort of hoops and things you have to jump through in modern to make to make it work, to make magic work. It's the way the game is designed that it's designed pretty carefully and pretty specifically. And every once in a while, those rules get bent. But, like, something as simple as just being able to play colors more easily and, like, not your mana base not really being the thing that holds you back 
uh, especially in a powerful format, is less. It's less fun ultimately for the game. It's it's fun if you're a new player and you want to just build something cool so you can play all the cards. But as soon as you start getting into actually playing it, like competitively at all, it starts to feel like you're playing the same game all the time, and that's not very fun. Like right. you shouldn't be able to just play the best cards in every deck. That doesn't, you know. Yeah, I think I think just the world is a better place without it really being a thing. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I'm privatizing the original live video really quick. No, make it the one where I fix my hair for 16 seconds. Not a great look for me. Yep, yeah, not a great look. Um, yeah, and, and and I think we'll 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 find that we get a lot of good. Like it'll be interesting what next steps are. I, I think that it's weird. We're now so used to bans happening so often that I wonder if Wizards is also used to bans happening so often, and so it's just like we'll ban this, like banning one cards at a time in modern to see what happens, and then the next card could be could be other cards that we think need to go. I am sad that like, I I do think like an unbanning would have made it a little bit more exciting, like a Splinter Twin unbanned or a Birthing Pot unbanned. Someone brought up uh, are are things that would be really cool. Um, I don't know if what do you think? So so Sean. Fancher, I think I'm saying the name correctly, uh, did ask, do you think snow decks are even playable without Astrolab? Uh, yeah, I do. I do. I mean, I don't think four-color snow decks are playable without Astrolab, but I think snow decks for sure are playable. I mean, there's they, they made a, a few really sweet cards, like, you know, that, that take advantage and want you to have snow. Like, there's a few of them, and we still have fetch lands and Prismatic Vista, and we still have, like, ways to get the lands you need into play, you know, snow lands are still basic lands they're still searchable it's just a little less convenient and playing four colors is not going to happen so um but yeah i think i think we'll see a snow deck i just think it's not going to be four color snow it'll probably be like that that three color or that two color with a third splash type of thing where you don't have to hit it early type of snow deck yeah yeah i think uh i agree track t-rex 1490 uh like the the codal is still a very strong card like that card is not going away it's something that's powerful um also i think that uh scred is just a card that's really good and those two will make snow a thing now the question is like four color snow decks still being playable i don't know um but i just think that those are the things causing four color decks and i think it'll just consolidate the three and two color because there's there's not that much of a cost to play three color snow anyways um once you get to three and two color it's like not the fact that astrolab isn't as necessary it just was so powerful that you were wrong to not play with it um right i mean like if you're playing a deck that's just like playing stoneforge mystic and codal and like and and gets your colors down i mean i guess the fact that you you have three colors there that you want to hit on turn two uh it just means that you don't play only snow lands though you are playing like a couple you are playing like a couple uh uh shock lands so you yeah. can hit your color if you need to but you're like playing a bunch of snow lands i and think i think regularly still... like my banner base is like eight fetches and two of each shock land when i'm not playing snow i think the decks will just be like less fetches and one of each shock and then the rest is just snow yeah. cards and you play with the 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 super evolving wilds and i'm forgetting what it's called or either of them yeah. yeah um and and so yeah that's i think i think like We'll see what happens in Modern. Um, I think that it has the... It, this was the, like, almost the most boring ban announcement of the four, um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I don't, I don't know if bans should be exciting. Uh, and now, anything else on Modern before we move on to... RIP Pioneer. No, I think I, th <laughs> I think this is this is a soft this is a soft move by them to then set up for the unbanning that'll happen on the next cycle. I'll bet you they were close. I'll bet you they were close on an unbanning. I'll bet you on the next one. That's what we get, um, unless something insane happens and like there's not an M there's not an M twenty one card that's gonna like destroy modern that uh, <laughs> that I'm thinking of right now. So like it would have to be in the next set. Well, also also think about like how long unbanning conversations have taken for most of the cards that needed to be unbanned, right? Like Jace was like a took like two year period. Years. Stoneforge, Stoneforge took like five years. And like the conversation feels, I would say that Stoneforge Mystic, when people would talk about unbanning it, most people would were like, yeah, just unban it, whatever. With Splinter Twin, there's still a pretty strong response from people on a like don't do it right like uh, even in our chat right now I mean, just talking about unbanning birthing potter's twin was was something that people were um were like already don't want don't even want to talk about birthing pod coming off the ban list and like splinter twin i think is more likely between those two cards i think people love that deck that's i think the big thing and i think it was a good police person on the format and i think that people want to see that again um I just don't think we're there yet, especially because the the big thing I have is 
inverter is this comparable deck and they like yeah are weirdly protecting it in pioneer and i wonder if yeah so that's like, the that's the next point right so they did not ban it so the only the only news in pioneer is that they unbanned oath of nissa uh <laughs> right yeah yeah the, so it. so they unban so pioneer format that like <laughs> We talked about having problems uh, in an episode two weeks ago. We didn't really talk, talk in that episode on the metagame too much because our thesis was that there were greater issues that were affecting the format. And probably the most common point on Pioneer was this is a format that will be... This is a format that is also unfun to play. There's a combination of like three different decks that are just super combo based that make the format kind of untenable for players to get into and inverter specifically is a card that just is miserable to play against um and wizard's response to this was to unban oath of nissa which gives a boon to green like green ramp decks so it gives it gives um devotion decks a big bump and then it also like allows Kethis combo to be a deck that's better now too, which is part of that. So I don't know if I agree. This just like doesn't do anything to a format that's already like struggling. Like literally the like challenge events haven't fired for two weekends in a row in this format. And I don't know how you deal with that with just unbanning this. I think that like, this is a big swing and a miss when inverter is just like the best deck in that's... the format and miserable to play against. That's got to be the thing about it that's the most uh, that's the most like head scratching, right? Is the fact that that they have the results all like like they they with with the banning announcement, like they can still change their mind like twenty four hours before it happens. This is not like printing cards where it takes two years. Like they're able to do what they want. They saw that this stuff was not firing for the last two weeks. That's a thing they were aware of. So like this feels to me like let's take a crack at just seeing if Pioneer can save itself, but we don't care that much. That's right. a little bit what this feels like. Right, because because the inverter deck, like, yeah, it's been a problem for months now. Yeah, I think I think that, and I think I think the other thing Wizards is worried about in Pioneer is with this ban and, and what it appears to me is that they have they said in the in the data that you know inverter doesn't win at the rate that they think it does, which fine I guess, but I I think that the issue I'm seeing more is this format is already tenuous in its existence. Like, literally, we, like, declared it dead <laughs> in an entire episode two weeks ago. And, yeah. like, the few players that are still playing it, banning their deck out from under them was something that Wizards was worried about doing. And the deck, like, the problem with Inverter and the problem with the other combo decks um, are that they're not, like... Like, banning Splinter Twin and Modern, the mo most of the cards that were expensive in that deck still playable you still have a blue red like it, the blue red mana base like blue moon was a, a, a deck that was available you can move into jess guy and do jess guy control like most of the cards that were expensive in that deck were fine um that's not true with pioneer right like if you ban inverter most of the cards just become useless yeah. useless and like i don't think a blue black yeah I, I i think that that's what i would be worried um and maybe, maybe I mean, like, this could also be signaling. This could be signaling. There's like another move coming, like an announcement coming with Pioneer that they're planning for. Sure. Um, to make it exciting in some way, to introduce something to it. That that could be what this is. But it, the traditional idea of that we have a healthy format, let's change it to make sure that people are excited about playing it is obviously not what this move is because that there you know there's 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 something else at play here. I think that's pretty clear. Yeah. Some some people brought up uh, in the chat that there's a chance that there's actually a deck out there that no one's thinking of um, that has really good um, matchups against it, like in Moto data, right? Like that's that's because one of the things Wizards looks at is is Magic the Gathering online data that they have that we don't have access to allows them to kind of see like how are these decks actually doing? And and one of their points was like and and in modern Astro Lab was banned because of this and in, in Pioneer the the inverter decks weren't is that inverter doesn't have the same type of positive matchup that uh, Astro have against the has against the field. And so from their perspective it wasn't needed to be banned. But at least from a perception perspective Right now, Pioneer just feels like three combo decks. You either have, uh, what's it called, Storm with uh, uh, the Escape. Uh, through the Breach, you have... Not Through the Breach. Yeah. I know what you're, ta I, I know what you're talking about. Uh, Chat, uh, help me. Not Through the Breach. Uh, Lotus Breach? Lotus, 
Lotus Breach decks, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah, oh, yeah. and you have Inverter, and there's like a third deck that I'm forgetting. And now they just like printed a card that let Mono Green ramp, and um, and 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 Kathis combo decks like get better as well, which are not exactly like play patterns I want. Someone brought up someone someone brought up that one of the problems is also that Inverter and Breach combo are both extremely skill intensive. So like they're it's kind of like what happened to Birthing Pod, right? Like Birthing Pod was the best deck in Modern for years, but it was also the hardest deck to play well. And so just like its win percentage numbers were lower than it deserved, just because to be good at it was much harder and so like people are worse at it so so there is a chance that both underworld breach thank you everyone uh decks and inverter decks are doing worse on moto because people are picking it up you know and and just like trying it out and aren't proficient with it so are just making line plays that are bad not necessarily that the deck is itself bad and if played optimally will just win the game i mean that's one thing that has been said a lot um about inverter decks is that even though it's probably unhealthy for the format, it's extremely fun if you're good at it and creates really, really fun gameplay states if you're playing it yeah. against other blue decks um, or decks that can interact with it. And that's cool. I mean, like, that's, like, like there are people that... There are a lot of pros that think Cobblade Standard, if Cobblade keeps coming up, but it's a banned announcement. Cobblade Standard was the best standard format to ever exist because just a Cobblade Mirror was the closest to almost chess in like how skill intensive and hard it is to kind of win that matchup and, and, and the decisions that were needed. So so maybe Wizard, since Pioneer is kind of flopping or not succeeding, maybe their thought is, you know what, let's let this format exist in that way. Let's give that as a boon to the players who love that since we're going to have to like do a pretty reinvigorated restart on this format in the, in the long run. And yeah, that's maybe another sign here as well. Yeah, I think it's a I think it's a solid point. Um, we should get out of here in just a minute here, but I want to remind everybody here to check out patreon.com slash the MMcast. It's the number one way you guys can support what we are doing. There's a bunch of cool levels. If you want to kind of continue having a conversation about this, we do this thing called the the tea time at the House of Modern before we record the show on Tuesday nights. Um, you jump in at eight o'clock, you kind of hang out with us in basically a Discord chat like this for about 15 or 20 minutes. Talk about what's going on with magic. You guys can check out all those tiers at patreon.com slash the MMcast. There's additional content coming out all the time. Um, so, so check that out. Remember, hit subscribe and the thumbs up on the video, guys. If you're watching, yeah. hit the thumbs up. There's like almost 300 of yeah, you yeah. now. Only, right. Bef yeah, only before 100 we, likes. Yeah, I want, I want to give everyone a chance to to like and subscribe really quick. So I, I, I want to do a small a small discussion. And by the way, Mono White Devotion is the third combo deck. So it's White Devotion with Heliod. Uh, and those other two cards are the ones that were currently the main features of the Pioneer format. Uh, but let's, 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 like, I, I want to talk about with the chat and you actually what your thoughts are on a Splinter Twin ban. Like, what does that do to the format? And, like, how does modern unban react? Thing? Unbanning, yeah. Like, like, because I think that's no, the I card mean... that, like, people are most wanting to see unbanned and is the most contentious. And I think we haven't talked about it in a while. The last time we really talked about it, there was more of a discussion on, like, this shouldn't be unbanned, right? Like, it, 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 one of our best performing episodes is an episode we had Tom Lapilli on and yeah. it was like within six months of him leaving Wizards and he sits down and like he's like this is what's going to happen Aaron Forthice is going to go into his office he's going to mope he's going to come out and he's going to just ban Splinter's one right before the Pro Tour and it's going to he's going to feel bad about it but and then like literally within like a couple weeks that's exactly what happened um, and people went back and were like freaking out about how like <laughs> that got shot called, but, and no one saw it coming, right? Like no one at the time, one of the reasons I think Splinter Swin is, is, is a card people want to see unbanned is people were blindsided by its banning. It wasn't like, com it wasn't like Hogak or even Astrolab where people were like talking about this needing to go for a while. It was kind of just a pillar of the format that people yeah. loved. We on the episode at the time talked a lot of how basically it made it so anything three drop or more was unplayable in the format. If it was sorcery speed, because this card existed, but we now live in a time where, like, there's much better instant speed removal, right? Fatal Push didn't exist then. You didn't have Assassin's Trophy. You didn't have cards like um, Dovin's Veto that could that's what I was know, gonna, fight that, against that's these That's what things. I was going to actually say when you were just asking, like, generally my first thoughts on it. It actually has more to do with the fact that, like, the interaction with the format and the number of passive ways to stop Splinter Twin from what it's doing that exists. I mean, if you recall back in the day, like... I loved Spellskite, and we would play, like, Torpor Orb in our sideboard. Like, that's, like, what you would do. You'd, like, you know, and, and, and that was supposed to be pretty good. And you had, like, your other, you know, your few other ways to interact. You know, you'd have Path and stuff. But, like, there weren't as many passive ways to just interact with Splinter Twin. Mm -hmm. um, and so, there, 
just like the blue white control decks, like three minute to fairy. There's just a lot of things people are doing that are going to be very good against that deck that are going to just make that deck a lot less good. Um, and I guess the biggest concern is the fact that like if Splinter Twin was to be unbanned, blue has also continued to be good. It doesn't have a good new cantrip, but blue does have Jace. So like you do have the fact you have like more support and like other ways to make that deck better. Um, I think the interaction though, and, and like you said, I mean, stuff like, like Abrupt Decay uh, and, and, and Assassin's Trophy and like lots of instant speed ways in all of the decks to have ways to interact now makes me feel a little less concerned about the deck being overpowered, especially because the card Splinter Twin is so bad and the format has gotten so much better. So like you're, you're playing four dead cards in your deck to make this work, whereas like there are so many good things that Modern is doing now most decks are not playing four dead cards. That's like just not really a thing that you can get away with. Yeah, I think like like chat's bringing up a lot. Like Snoop, the new Goblin combo lists are like just a deck that is better. It wins a turn earlier than than it does. Now I do think there's differences, right? Like Splinter Twin is a tempo control deck, where Snoop is an aggro deck that has like a combo finish on turn two or three, turn three. Um, so I, yeah. I do think there's sm small differences there, but I think that yeah, I think that it's a little bit slow compared to what other decks are doing and winning in the format now, uh, though it being an interactive deck helps it. I think that to fairy being like, there were many, like the, I've even like, I think I took to a GP of a uh, Jeskai guy list of twin that was playing like wall of omens. So that you like could, you know, use the wall of omens draw card engine as like an alternative to just, uh, going off. And some decks just couldn't beat that combo. Um, and just adding to fairy to that seems, to, seems, seems, terrifying like being able to splinter twin with teferi in play is like one thing that i do think makes it a little yeah. bit difficult to unban um and and that would be really the conversation right is like with teferi in the format do just guys splinter twin decks just become unbeatable uh or or just like miserable to play against and at the same time the opposite side of that is like or is that just too slow like is there just decks that are faster than that and is that a problem like do those decks need to be looked at and would splinter twin be kind of a good policeman right like the the classic blue red splinter twin was pretty able to be reactive in a way that made it so that it was able to police against these decks. And sometimes you just tapped out and lost, right? So I think that there is a pretty, pretty strong, strong, like kind of arguments on both sides. And, and someone brought up like, I and I would 100% let Teferi be banned and then to unban Twin though. Like, I think, I think that that, if I was to unban Twin, if I was Wizards right now, I would be banning Teferi at the same time. I think that card just should go away anyways, as much as I like blue, white Planeswalkers. Um, <laughs> It just I mean, I think the so one miserable. problem with that, though, is if you ban three minute to fairy out of the format, I, mean, I realize that it does make a just guy twin deck like insane, but it's also like one of the cards that I would want the most against a blue red flash deck. I'd want to have I'd want to be able to play my own flash strategy. But I, yeah, I guess that doesn't really help. Right. Like, like, cause like uh, yeah, you can. It's hard, right? Like, yes, it, I, I think that 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 it is both a good answer against it, but it, it's such a good support card for it. And I would be more worried about its ability to support it than fight it. Uh, someone also brought up that, uh, you know, Splinter Twin um, coming back. It was Carson, I think, <laughs> would, uh, is great. And it would be good that Splinter Twin was good again because Splinter Twin being good against Twin is like one of the reasons it was good in the first place. Um, I will I will tell you that uh, on the subject of Teferi, uh, just because I only got to finally play against uh, four mana Teferi, the new one, uh, just the other day on on uh, M twenty one draft, mm -hmm. and I didn't realize the fact that because you can do the thing at instant speed, you can do it on both turns. Oh, that's yeah. like the thing about that card that I missed, which oh, like interesting. I was like, yeah, oh, yeah. this card's so good. That's why <laughs> that's why commander so players better. that's why commander players like dislike it, right? Because you basically can ultimate yeah. it in one turn. Not one turn, but yeah, pretty quickly. I'll uh, definitely be adding that to my SIG deck. That like <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so that card's that card's really bonkers. The the other card that people wanted to bring up uh, looks like is Faith of Looting, right? Like that's that's the other card and Bridge. Like people want to unban Bridge, and that I think makes sense to me. It was banned for other card sins, and I think it's fine to unban. I just think it's like a little early for Wizards to admit mistakes that quickly on something. Yep. So I think that card will. Uh, the only reason that won't come off is just like a level of nothing good comes from this card being unbanned like yeah it, that's fair and at any moment it could be too powerful but it also is like doing nothing it won't it's probably not power level wise willing to be banned so it's like a weird philosophy yeah. of 
should cards be on the ban list even if they're not good? I think not. I think they should be unbanned. But I know a lot of people that are, are more of the opinion. Like, once it's on there, if it's something that could create an unhealthy game state, just leave it there. We don't need it. Yeah, um, don't just arbitrarily unban it. I'm with you there. Good morning, Jarl and Dill. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Uh, yeah, I think I think that we... I want Faithless Looting unbanned. I want Splinter Twin unbanned, actually. I'd like both of those unbanned. Give Red some cool cards. Um, but I don't think... I, I, I'd be surprised if I see... Uh, uh, Faith of Sooting unbanned anytime soon. Yeah, that card that card does some wild, wild stuff. Um, yeah, sadly. So we I think that unfortunately have to yeah. jump out of here, but uh, appreciate everybody tuning in to watch us live. This was super cool. Yep. Be sure to hit the thumbs up. Uh, but, and, if, and honestly, when the video is done, if you guys just watch the live stream, do us a favor and leave a comment. Honestly, yeah. comment on YouTube videos. They jack the things up in the algorithm. They make they push them out to people. Um, and it would mean a lot to us if you guys just left a quick comment. Right. Did you enjoy They're... the live stream? Do you guys want to see more live streams? We're not doing them really these days. We're doing a lot more podcast episodes and and yeah, if and you guys are into the live streams, we could do more of them. Speaking of which, make sure tonight, 8 p.m. PST, Pacific Standard Time, we will be doing a Commander game live. Ben's first live Commander game. Uh, and yeah, it's our second, true. and I think, on our channel. So it'll be really fun uh, to see everyone there and have a good time. Uh, make sure to follow, subscribe, all those good things. Uh, there's 225 of you, and there's only 116 likes, which is just a little disappointing and makes me sad. So yeah, this is your moment on, to kind of make it happen. Um, and yeah, so we'll be here. 8 p.m. and then you can also see it on my twitch at uh at kes wiley kes wiley on twitch and then ben is also doing command uh game streams uh it looks like most wednesdays so make sure to follow yep. up ben bateman streams as well on twitch um ben streaming ben bateman ben streaming. streaming in fact i'm gonna put links in here for things twitch dot tv cool. slash b-e-n-b-a-t-e-m-a-n s-t-e-r-m streaming Maybe that works. Ben streaming. Twitch.tv slash... I guess I should just put that into the restream feed instead so that it goes everywhere. Uh, there. And then we're going to do uh, twitch.tv slash Kess Wiley. Make sure to like, follow, etc. on all the places. Thanks so much for everyone watching. Um, yeah. And it was really awesome. We had like 200 people here. And we'll talk to you guys and girls and friends uh, later today. Cool. <laughs> and when the episode comes out Friday. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye, guys.